All right, hey there, it's Natalie. I'm here in Fumba Town in Zanzibar. Um, you can see there's the beach that I haven't been to in a week um, because we're having way too much fun doing this. So um, as you've seen in my previous videos, I'm here on a course to learn to do how to do super adobe construction. Um, super adobe is really about earth bag construction, which has been evolved into using these long tubes um, of bags that we are filling here with Vumbi, which is like a coral sand, a crushed coral uh, that's that's quarried not or any along any groves or any sensitive ecological situation, but it's a locally available material. We've got the clay rich soils down there and then we're mixing that with lime. And what we're doing is we're just filling these bags, laying them down, tamping them, barb wiring them together, and this whole place is coming up. So I'm here in Fumba Town with Franco Guse, Mr. Green, Frank Green. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> um, and so, you know, um, we're in Fumba Town, which some people might call a permaculture town, um, although I, I would say it's really a kind of a transition town. It's showing how a development that was initially envisioned and and designed to be sort of a construction, I mean, sorry, a conventional construction project to do a housing development. It is an intentional community, a planned community. Um, but I think Franco and Bernadette were really brought in to focus on bringing in the permaculture aspects into the landscape. Is that right? Yes, yes. We kind of started with the uh, landscape and the uh, waste management and then obviously kind of creating such structures as here with the earthquakes kind of talks to uh, everyone that's around us, so also to the developers. Right. And they are kind of uh, uh, five years having us intensively around them <laughs> has rubbed up and they are now uh, looking into more natural building methods for our town as well on the way forward. I mean, we already started five years ago with timber frame houses yeah. now going to cross-laminated timber. And, that's great. And obviously we're looking always in our spaces of different methods, learning, doing, experimenting, you know, getting a better insight. Right. And it's a path like that we are on to see what is possible and what can be done. So you came in to really make an edible town. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> so Franco and Bernadette are focusing on the landscaping aspects of it and how to bring edibility, permaculture design, agroforestry type thinking. And as you're saying, it's influencing the actual design of the future sections of the, of the, of the housing developments. Here in this town so far, we've got between five and 600 housing units at various price points. There's apartments, there's, there's standalone homes or duplexes. Um, we've got a shopping center that's coming in. Um, and that what this is going to be is a little community focal point, um, which would be a bit of a, a social hub for children. We've got a daycare center already there that's already somewhat active, right? Yes, uh, the kindergarten is opposite. Uh, it's for the first, the youngest. And uh, the idea is to, uh, you know, put a permaculture small and slow solution. We start with the kindergarten, the preschool, and then uh, there's a whole educational campus plan, but, you know, to in, uh, ignite to get the thing rolling, to get the energy going. And then obviously we want to, uh, uh, and Bernadette and my major job or major benefit of us to the town is the community development. Yeah. Because these spaces are for people, right? And like here, for the children, to educate them to be more outdoors, to climb, you know, to play with sand and out more outdoors. More interactive, yeah. Yes. The, 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 maybe there is going to be a, a, a kitchens to teach cooking transformation of knowledge from the older to the younger generation, exactly. live performances, good birthday parties, whatever, you know. It's, um, so this space that we're building right now is sort of a community flex space yes. and performing arts, it's a social space, it's a food space. So um, here we've got, if I just zoom in for a minute, we're actually building a stage. You can see the stairs come, that will lead up to the stage that will fill. And right now we're wrapping that whole back wall around the stage putting in some different elements. You can see a tire there, that's gonna be a window. Um, and then there'll be a seating area inside covered probably with, a, with that tent or another. And then here we'll have the kiosk, which is sort of an open air cafe. Um, but it's a meeting point, it's a social space, it's an event space, it's flexible, it can be for community events, it can be maybe even for outside events, it can yes. be for birthday parties for the kids. And then we're also gonna have a playground, I think over here and then bathrooms will be there. And then what you see behind are planter boxes, which I'll show in some other videos that I'll make around. Um, but coming off of the road, you know, getting all that rainwater off of the road and into big, those big planter boxes, which this place is gonna be completely transformed. This will be a jungle. You won't even be able to see this um, 
amphitheater because we'll have high growth, uh, high canopy trees, a um, lot of huge, you know, hugely uh, vegetated density here. Um, so we'll be kind of visually impermeable, a lot of vegetative um, buffer so that, you know, the view. Exactly. Um, and so what I was going to say, though, is that, you know, I mean, I love this project because myself being a, you know, an urban planner, that's my background. Um, thinking about how we do create livable, walkable human spaces and how we shape the human experience through the built environment and how we bring nature into that. And I think Fumba Town globally is a great example of how um, not just to start from a new, which is obviously a costly endeavor to just start your own town. <laughs> not everyone has that you know, opportunity. <laughs> um, but so, you know, again, blending some of the conventional, um, you know, conventional standards of construction that were originally thought of for the space and seeing how the idea of permaculture, not only in the ecological and natural landscape, but even what you're talking about, the social permaculture aspects, right? The, uh, you know, how we bring community together, equity, inclusion. It's a very inclusive feeling place. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how over time, as you've mentioned, some of the partners on the program are already being influenced into thinking, how do we now bring this into the actual built environment and the structures themselves? Yes. So what Franco mentioned was the cross-laminated timber. Yes. Moving away, you know, what we want to move away from is these giant concrete projects that are full of iron and timber which is why um, the Super Adobe is such an interesting option. I mean, it, it def you know, Super Adobe has its critics because we're using, in this case, polypropylene tubing. Um, but what I will say is that everything that we're building here is by far more ecologically sustainable, regenerative than structures like that. This is, you know, we have very, very minimal cement only along the foundations. And after that, only locally available materials, lime, sand, and clay filled in the bags. There are options also under hyper adobe, which is using different types of the tubing. So what I would love to see is innovation and green chemistry around bamboo based, fungal based, um, who knows what uh, jute bags, hemp, you know, to create the same tubing with the same strength that can accommodate this sort of mix. But anyway, this video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks, Franco. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Hello, <laughs> greetings from Zanzibar. Yes. <laughs> Greetings. Oh, look, right. here's me at the beach. Can you see the water? All right, thanks. <laughs>